This time we will make a table based on the Avatar movie. A really flying rock, natural plants and Avatar, almost like a living one. Enjoy watching. As you can see, this project started back in winter. Since there are three workshops involved in it, this is not a quick business. But looking ahead, I will say that it was worth it. The countertop will be made of this kind of bog oak slab, which is more than 500 years old. This can be understood by its color, the longer the oak lies in the water, the darker it becomes. There are, of course, many more factors, but I make a rough analysis based on the color. In general, the longer the oak is in the water, the darker and stronger it becomes. But the bark cannot boast of such properties. It is it that we remove, or rather what is left of it. And after an hour of work, we have black snow and such a workpiece, which we saw in half. As a result, we need to get four blanks from one slab. With the help of a convenient tool and a jigsaw, we split it along. The next step is to process two planes and get an angle of 90 degrees. To do this, it remains to pass it through the planer several dozen times. After an hour of work, we have four blanks with an ideal angle of 90 degrees. When we have one perfectly aligned side, based on it, we level the counter side by passing wood through the thickness gauge, in parallel making all four elements the same in thickness. We need to build a levitron into one of the sides of the table in order to make a small island levitate, just like in the movie Avatar. To do this, using the CNC, we make a sample in which the device fits perfectly. You will see its functionality a little later. Now it remains to saw all four elements at 45 degrees and get a square countertop. Many people know that it is difficult to cut the ideal angle at 45 degrees on an ordinary miter saw. But, as you can see, we managed to do this. The fact is that Andre has been doing and studying carpentry every day for many years. In order for the joints to look natural, we process unevenness with a chisel. Then we get a natural joint with a ragged edge. And so on all four corners. When everything is adjusted, we proceed to gluing. Everything is simple here, glue and a standard joint on the dowel. Although, in fact, this is even superfluous, since in the future the central part will be filled with epoxy. And based on experience, I will say that it is unrealistic to tear it off the wood. But since it is still far from the pouring and we have to take the countertop to other workshops, we decided to glue it more reliably. The next day the glue is dry and I remove the clamps, which are very handy clamps, by the way. Now we need to make a placeholder on which the whole decoration will be placed. To do this, we take a regular sheet of plywood, more glue around the entire perimeter and it remains to fix all this with a staple gun, which is what I'm doing.
As I said, in the future this box will be filled with resin to the top. In order to minimize the release of air from the wood, I pre-coat the entire underframe with varnish. The next step is to fill in the first layer of resin, which will be a black backing and will allow us to make sure that all joints are sealed before pouring in 15 kilograms of the base compound. For these purposes, I took a compound called Crystal Epoxy from Artline, and I tinted with black dye. While the resin is drying, we are busy with the underframe. For legs will be made of the same bog oak and decorated with stabilized natural moss and fern. To make the moss look fresh and alive after stabilization, it is slightly tinted. Therefore, I pour the first layer as a primer so that the green dye doesn't float in the thickness of the resin. And along the way, in order to isolate the exit of air from the wood. The next day, when the first layer has set, fill in the main layer. For these purposes, I took a compound called Wood Pro. I fill the future legs with it to the top. And here you can see that the fern is slightly saturated with resin and wet spots have appeared. This should be taken into account in the future. After four days, the resin has cured and we are dismantling the formwork. First of all, with the help of a jointer, we level one of the sides in order to get the other three even sides basing on it. And this is why epoxy is often hated in the carpentry workshop. These shavings scatter throughout the workshop and are magnetically attached to everything in their path, this is such a snowfall. The next step is to pass the work pieces through a sizing grinding machine. And after a couple of trips, we have perfectly polished parts, which can be varnished, this time with a glossy varnish. This is what I did. While the legs are drying, we return to the tabletop. To do the painting based on the movie Avatar, we need a portrait of the Avatar, oddly enough. For this I grind the resin and go to Yulia. She is a cool tattoo artist, artist and a good person. Thank her very much for participating in the project, here is her Instagram. Well, then without further ado.
After the paints have dried, we go back to the workshop and cover the portrait with glossy varnish in order to protect it. Next we drill a hole and set the countertop at a slight angle. And we can begin decorating. As you remember, the fern is saturated with resin and loses its general appearance, so I decided to pre-protect it with a layer of drying matte varnish. Now you can do the decor. Before pouring resin on the moss, we decided to prime it with the same resin. This is why a hole was made through which the resin, tinted with moss, flows down. We lay out the composition. I don't particularly accept artificial flowers, especially in the fill, so I remind you that all these bumps, ferns and moss are stabilized and natural. After a couple of days, when the composition is ready and the primer layer of resin has cured, proceed to the main fill. The main thing is not to forget to close the hole through which the green resin was drained, otherwise it will be possible to pour indefinitely. Along the perimeter we make a small side of silicone sealant. Since the resin shrinks slightly after curing, we need a margin of height, for this the side is made. Here we rushed a bit with the sequence and first we need to add more effects, specifically the optic fiber. So, I usually drill a hole for an optic fiber zero. 75 millimeters with a zero. 8 millimeters drill, which I recommend to you. But, of course, it all depends on the material. I usually do this in plywood and the fiber passes through well, but at the same time it stays in place. I've drilled hundreds of these holes already, so I know what I'm talking about. By the way, once we made a map and highlighted cities in the same way. Who has not watched, I recommend to. But for those who are going to do this for the first time with a zero. 8 millimeters drill, I advise you to take drills in reserve. I also know what I'm talking about. And here is the long-awaited optic fiber. First, I push it into all the holes, but not completely, so as not to search for each channel under the microscope in the future. The next step is to take UV resin. Its peculiarity is that it is a one-component compound and polymerizes, that is dries up, in a couple of minutes under ultraviolet radiation. This way I fix all the points in place and seal the holes in parallel. Yes, even through such a hole, densely filled with fiber, the resin will escape without problems. When all 40 holes are covered with UV resin, place a UV lamp on top and leave for 5 minutes. And in the meantime, we mix 15 kilograms of resin. This time we take a compound called Monolith 5 for volumetric fills. Excellent compound, polymerizes in 7 days. During this time, all bubbles come out on their own, unless, of course, you fill in some porous materials, from which air can escape for years. And we pour outside a bucket. After 7 days, we return to the countertop. As you can see, it is already on the CNC, which means it will be calibrated. With the help of the CMT cutter, we calibrate it, removing half a millimeter per pass. 
we were afraid to overdo it and remove the more than required, so we decided to make an extra pass and not open the sample made for the Levitron. Because it's only 3mm to reach the sample. If you've forgotten what I mean, we'll get back to it soon. So, after a few passes, I sanded the countertop and, as you can see, cover it with a glossy varnish. And I leave it for two more days. The next step is to get to the fun part. In order to add flavor to the project, I turned to Roman Kramov. By the way, this is the name of his YouTube channel. There he makes mega cool dioramas, be sure to drop in. And for our project, he made just such a flying rock, just like in the movie Avatar. And with the help of the Levitron and a magnet, we make it levitate. All links will be in the description of the video. And now it remains to put everything together. We will illuminate the fiber with an RGB LED, in order to illuminate such a beam of 40 twigs. We put the Levitron in its place, fix the legs and evaluate the result in the comments. Such projects take a lot of time and effort, so please help with the distribution of this video, a thumb up, a long comment, and most importantly, share the video anywhere. Thank you and catch positive attacks from the axe.